everybody, I'm Richard Older and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at my favorite subject, which is turbo cams, because every cam is indeed a turbo cam. And here's my challenge to the people that would tell you otherwise. First, I want you to ask yourself this very important question. Somebody that's telling you that every cam is not a turbo cam, are those same people trying to sell you a custom or turbo cam? Hmm. I'm not. I'm just giving you the data. Here's the important thing, and here's the challenge that I issue to all of these guys. Okay, here's what I want you to do. If every cam isn't a turbo cam, and my definition of a turbo cam is a cam that you can run successfully NA, and then when you add boost to that, it just multiplies whatever is there. That's my definition. Show me a camshaft where that doesn't happen. In fact, I'm so confident and I know that this happens because I've been testing it for 30 years and I've run more back-to-back -back tests on NA combinations that I then added turbos to with multiple different camshafts. In fact, we're going to take a look at 40 different ones. I would be confident that I could walk over to Brian Tooley Racing, Comp Cams, Texas Speed, Cam Motion, Iski, all of them. Show me the wall where they have the LS camshafts. Let's find one where they all fit available piston to valve clearance. I don't care whether it's a stock cam, a truck cam, a positive displacement blower cam, NA, turbo, nitrous, whatever it is. I'll close my eyes. I'll walk over to that shelf. I'll grab a camshaft and I'll stick it in a motor on the dyno. I'll run it NA and guess what? I'll also run it under boost because it doesn't matter what that camshaft does. Whatever it does NA, when I add the turbo to it, it's just going to multiply whatever is there. Right now, we're going to take a look at 40 different camshafts that I've run, five of which are turbo cams, stage one, two, three, etc. All the rest of them, not turbo cams. We're going to take a look at the ranges of lift that I've run. We're going to take a look at the ranges of duration that I've run. We're going to take a look at the ranges of lobe separation angle that I've run. And we're going to take a look at the dreaded overlap, because we all know that you can't run overlap with a turbo cam, and yet you can. We're going to take a look at all these ranges, and I'm going to show you what happens. In fact, I'm going to show you quickly right now. Take a look at this curve. This curve is a perfect example of what happens every time we run a motor with any camshaft. This is a stock camshaft versus a sloppy stage two. The sloppy stage two makes more than the stock camshaft NA. It also makes more than, the, more than the stock camshaft at the same boost level. In fact, the curves are, are the same. And this is what happens when we add boost. This is what happens when we add boost to the stock cam, which is not a turbo cam. This is what happens when we add boost to the sloppy stage two cam, which is not a turbo cam. In fact, this is what happens when we add boost to any camshaft regardless of whether or not it's a turbo. Let's take a look at all the details. Okay, guys, as promised, we're going to take a look at the four aspects, the four major aspects of camshafts to determine which one of those affects whether or not this is a turbo cam or not. We're going to start off with lift, but we're also going to look at duration, lobe separation angle, and overlap. But starting with lift, does the lift determine whether or not a camshaft is actually a turbo cam or not? So in my testing over the years, we're taking a look at about 40 different camshafts that I ran. And this is very important to note that I ran all of these camshafts, both NA, and then ran them under boost with a turbo. That's very, very important because a lot of guys will just run a turbo and go, hey, look, I'm a hero. Yeah, you put a thousand horsepower turbo on an application and guess what? It can make a thousand horsepower, but it can do that with like a hundred or 200 or 300 different cam profiles. But let's jump right in and take a look at lift. So I've run camshafts over the years in my testing, both NA and with a turbo, and the lift values have ranged from down below 450 lift all the way up above near 650 lift. So a 200 thousandths lift range, and whether it's a low lift, a medium lift, or a high lift, they all had one thing in common. When I ran these motors NA with Whoa. any given lift range and we added boost to it, the boost just multiplied the power output that was already there that the camshaft with whatever lift it had, whatever NA power output it provided, the turbo just multiplied what was there. And this will be a very common theme in all of this discussion because this is what happens. It doesn't matter whether it's a mild or even stock cam with 450 lift. 
If you add a turbo to it, the turbo just multiplies whatever power curve is already there and produced by that camshaft. If we have a medium lift camshaft, like a five, 500 or 550 lift camshaft, same thing. Whatever NA power combination or whatever power curve that camshaft produces with a medium lift, the turbo is just going to multiply what's there. If we have a high lift camshaft, if that camshaft makes more power, whatever NA power curve that high lift camshaft produces, the turbo is just going to multiply what's there. So obviously, and quite honestly, lift would be the least thing that I would consider when I'm determining whether or not a camshaft is a turbo cam or not, but all cams are turbo cams, but the lift would be the least one. So let's, now that we've taken a look at lift, let's jump over to duration and low separation angle and the dreaded overlap on a turbo cam. Okay, guys, if cam lift doesn't determine whether or not a cam is a turbo cam, then certainly duration must, right? How long we're opening that valve, you can't have long duration camshafts with the turbo. Well, actually, that's not true. And if we take a look at all of these cams that I've run, the 40 camshafts I've run, five of which are actually turbo cams, the duration varied greatly with all these cams. And again, just like with lift, all of these cams, whether they're turbo cams, NA cams, nitrous cams, positive displacement blower cams, truck cams, whatever kind of cams that they are, whatever they do NA, they also do under boost. We'll talk about this at the end of the video. The things that you should actually consider when choosing a camshaft for your application have nothing to do with whether or not you're going to add a turbo. Whether you're adding a turbo to it is actually a secondary thing. The things that you want from your camshaft have nothing to do with that. We're going to get into that at the end, so make sure to stick around to the end of the video. But on duration, taking a look at these 40-odd cams or so that I've run, the duration has varied from as low as 190 degrees at 50 in a stock camshaft, the LM7, all the way up to 242 degrees of duration at 50, and actually 248 degrees of duration at 50, if you count the exhaust side. But all of these camshafts had the same thing in common. Whatever the camshaft does NA, it is going to do under boost. Meaning if the, you, you put a big camshaft, meaning a long duration camshaft in, it's going to lose power down low and gain power up top most typically. Guess what? It's going to do exactly the same thing under boost. As I've said, whatever power curve it produces, whether that's good down low or bad down low and good up top or bad up top, whatever it does based on those duration numbers that you've chosen, it's going to do that under boost because the boost is just going to multiply what's there. If you have a camshaft with lots of duration that's soft down low, it's also going to hurt spool, which is one of the things that we're going to talk about at the end. What you want your camshaft to do, again, not with a turbo, whatever it does NA. And if it makes more power down low NA, it's going to improve boost. But like I said, I've run camshafts, and I'm most interested in talking about the camshafts that fit like on an LS application like this with available piston to valve clearance. So we're talking about on the stock camshafts, 190 degrees or so of duration at 50 all the way up to somewhere in the mid 230s on the intake duration, which would kind of be like the Summit cam that I tested. That was a 234 degrees of duration at 50, so a pretty good sized camshaft. But still, <laughs> it worked very well under boost. And as I said, I tested them NA. We found out what the power curve was NA. Then we tested them under boost. And in every circumstance, whatever the power curve was NA, when we added boost to it, it just multiplied whatever is there. And every one of these camshafts, ranging from 190 degrees all the way up to 242 degrees of duration, all of them ran and ran very well under boost. So lift doesn't matter. Lift doesn't determine whether or not it's a turbo cam. And now duration doesn't determine whether or not it's a turbo cam. So what about lobe separation angle. Let's check it out. Okay, so far we've covered lift and duration, and we've seen a wide range of lift run successfully under boost, a wide range of duration run under boost. It does the same thing regardless of what camshaft I tested on, but let's talk about lobe separation angle. Obviously, we can't run every type of lobe separation angle successfully with boost, right, Richard? Well, Yes, we can. In fact, taking a look at all of these different cams, including the turbo cams, the NA cams, the positive displacement, centrifugal blower cams, nitrous cams, truck cams. I've run camshafts with, with lobe separation angles varying from as tight as 107 and a half, 107.5, all the way up to 122.5. 
And guess what? <laughs> you should already know what the answer is. Every one of these cams I've run Whoa. NA and under boost, and they do exactly the same thing when I add boost. Whatever the NA power curve is, whatever this change in lobe separation angle does, whatever power curve it produces, when you add boost to it, it just multiplies what's there. Even on a wild, wide LSA 122.5, an LS7 or an LS9 factory camshaft, designed for, in the case of the LS9, designed for a factory uh, positive displacement blower application that they want to idle well, that is not my ideal camshaft. And remember, none of these are. I'm not saying that all of these cams make the same power. I'm saying whatever power curve they make NA, when you add boost to it, it just multiplies what's there. In the case of an LS9 camshaft, if we take a look at that, it is very soft down low. It doesn't spool very well, but it makes good peak power. So it's going to do exactly that under boost. There's lots of guys out there running eights and nines running that camshaft, even though it's not the cam I would recommend. It obviously works under boost. And so it is, in fact, despite the fact that it was made for a positive displacement blower, it is, in fact, a turbo cam. In fact, if we take a look, the truck Norris cam that I have up here, that's the tight LSA cam. That's 107 and a half. If we compare the truck Norris to the uh, stock camshaft, the stock LM7 camshaft, we see the comparison NA. And then we also see the comparison at the same boost level. And guess what? If you take a look at that, that's proof positive, And that's exactly what happens under boost. Whenever you run a camshaft, when we run the stock camshaft and we run boost, it just mirrors the same curve. When we have changed the curve by putting a different camshaft in it, in this case, a truck Norris, tight LSA, 107 and a half, guess what? still works fantastic under boost. In fact, it does exactly, <laughs> makes the curve, just duplicates the curve, just raises it up, just elevates the curve under boost. So the change that we see in A is also the change that we see under boost. So if it's not LSA, it must be a lobe separation angle. Let's find out. Okay, guys, we talked about lift, duration, and lobe separation angle. And before we jump into overlap, because we know the dreaded overlap, no camshaft, no turbo camshaft needs to have overlap. I want to talk a little bit more about lobe separation angle because I forgot to mention one thing. When we were testing all of these cams, the other thing that I noticed is we have big changes in the duration split. So we have some that are single pattern cams where the intake and exhaust duration are the same. We have dual pattern cams where it has more exhaust duration than intake duration by a little bit, seven or eight degrees. And then we have the rec port style cams where we have a big change in lobe separ or a big change in duration from the intake to the exhaust. So 18 or 20 degrees more exhaust duration than intake duration. And again, like you might expect, what did all these camshafts have in common? Well, whatever they did in A, when we added boost to them, it just multiplied what was there. There wasn't one of those camshafts that liked the turbo better. Whatever they did, whatever power change they made to the NA curve, the turbo just multiplied what was there. So now let's jump right in. This is the one. This is the one that's going to change it all. <laughs> this is overlap. We know that turbo camshafts cannot have overlap because all the boost is going to bleed out. The reality is that doesn't happen. What honestly would happen if you had anything happen is since there's usually more back pressure than boost pressure, what would happen is the, the more back pressure would go back toward the induction system because there's more there than there is coming in. And so it would bleed the other way. The reality is that that doesn't happen. How do I know that? How do we know that overlap doesn't actually negatively affect turbo applications? Well, like all the rest of these, I've run a whole range of overlap, NA, and then under boost. And you guys probably already know what's going to happen. But here are the, here are the overlap changes that I've made. I've gone from camshafts that have negative 37 degrees of overlap, meaning that they're very, very mild. They're stock camshafts like the factory LM7 camshaft, all the way up to positive 25 degrees of overlap. That's right, 25 degrees of overlap. And guess what? How much ever overlap they have, whatever power curve they produced, obviously cams with more overlap are gonna produce a different power curve than cams with less overlap. But the thing that they all have in common, regardless of all of that range from negative 37 to positive 25, no matter what cam we tested and no matter what overlap it had, whatever it did NA, good or bad, when we added boost, it just multiplied what was there. <laughs> so what do you guys think about? And, and to further cement this, let's take a look at a couple of our dedicated turbo cams. And none of those turbo cams have overlap, right? No, that's wrong. They all do. In fact, the, the smallest camshaft, the stage one turbo camshaft has negative 1.5. 
but the stage two has 2.5 degrees of overlap. The stage three has 4.5 and the stage three twin turbo cam has 6.5 degrees of overlap. So we know that overlap does work with a camshaft and we know that not having overlap works with a camshaft, uh, works with a turbo camshaft. In fact, we have turbo cams that, ha that don't have overlap, that have negative overlap. And we have turbo cams that do have positive overlap. So this should tell you that <laughs> whether they have overlap or not, doesn't determine whether or not it's actually a turbo cam because all of these cams, all the lifts, all the directions, all the lobe separation angles, and all the overlaps all have the same thing in common. When you add boost, it just multiplies what's there. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, I hope you learned from this little adventure that you can run boost on any type of camshaft because every cam is indeed a turbo cam. We saw from all of these things, the various lift ranges, the various duration ranges, the various lobe separation angle ranges, and the dreaded overlap, all of these things responded the same way. Whatever they do NA, when you add boost, it just multiplies what's there. So the next question should be, well, Richard, then how do I choose a cam to make good NA power so that I can then add boost to that? Well, choosing a camshaft really set aside the fact for a second that it's a turbo. We're gonna bring that in in a second, but here are the things that you need to look at. What things are important in your choice of camshaft? First of all, can you use the stock camshaft? A guy that's looking for five or 600 horsepower from a turbo stock motor, it works very well. You can use the stock camshaft, 5.3, you put injectors in, especially if you're gonna run the 85, it's great. Injectors, a pump, a turbo, use a stock cam, it idles like stock, it drives around like stock, it works very well. And 500 horsepower at the tire is not really a problem with the stock camshaft and any kind of turbo that will support that power level. So that's always an option. I've got lots of videos up that show running boost on a stock camshaft and it does very well. But if you wanna make more power at a lower boost or you just wanna make more power, putting a camshaft in is a good idea. But what do you want from the camshaft? Do you want stock idle quality? Do you want the thing to have high vacuum under idle? Do you want to have chop? I mean, some guys want to announce what kind of camshaft they have. Do you want that? You pick the cam accordingly. Where do you want to make power? Do you want to make good low speed power? Do you want to make mid range? Do you want to make top end? And please don't select all of those because you kind of have to choose. What RPM range do you want to make power? Do you want drivability? Do you care about fuel mileage? Do you care about using a stock converter? All of these things have nothing to do with the fact that this is a turbo cam. It just has everything to do with the fact that you're choosing a camshaft to work with what you want it to do and where you want it to do it. Then we can decide on the turbo. But here's something that's very important. And I always recommend mild camshafts for turbo applications, not particularly turbo cams. In fact, I would not recommend, and I don't recommend a guy run a stage one, stage two, or stage three turbo cam on something that he's trying to make less than a thousand horsepower with. And the reason for that is the turbo is ultimately going to dictate the power output of your combination. What I normally recommend is a mild camshaft, a Chopacabra or a Truck Norris. If you pick that kind of camshaft, that camshaft is going to have good low speed power. And when we make good low speed power, what happens is we improve boost response. If you have a thousand horsepower turbo and a Truck Norris or Chopacabra or other Summit version or cam motion, if you have a small cam like that, that's still fairly powerful, you can max out that thousand horsepower turbo or 700 or 600 or 900 or whatever it is. You can max that turbo out. The turbo is going to dictate what that is. Putting a bigger camshaft in a stage two or stage three turbo cam with a thousand horsepower turbo, you're still going to make a thousand horsepower. But with a smaller cam, you're going to have more boost response and it's going to be a funner combination and be more responsive and still make the same power. So how is that not a good thing? Remember, every cam is a turbo cam. I'm Richard Older. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And if you find a cam that I can't do this to, I'll find 10,000 that will.